After hearing oral arguments earlier today, the Supreme Court will rule on a case that will determine whether average Americans will continue to have an independent federal watchdog to push back against the abuses of big financial institutions. The case I'm speaking of is the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, CFPB, versus Community Financial Services Association of America. It deals with an outlandish ruling of the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals that would invalidate the congressionally approved funding scheme of the CFPB. If it stands, the ruling will starve the Bureau of Funding and effectively prevent it from working on behalf of the American people. But let's take a step back to remember why the CFPB was created over a decade ago. In the run-up to the Great Recession, lenders were aggressively marketing subprime mortgages with predatory features to borrowers they knew had no ability to pay. Reckless Wall Street firms bundled those mortgages into securities and sold them to investors, including pension funds. And weak regulators stood by as all of this unfolded. Borrowers ultimately discovered that they could not repay their mortgages. The securities backed by these mortgages took a nosedive, causing a meltdown in the banking system and taking down the entire economy. While Wall Street got a lifeline from the Congress and the federal government, millions of Americans did not. They paid with their jobs, their homes, and their savings. The unemployment rate peaked at 10%. Nearly 7.5 million families lost their homes, and Americans lost $20 trillion in household wealth. At the time, people rightfully asked, who was looking out for them? And the truth was, no one really. American families were ill-served by financial regulators and by the system. A half dozen federal agencies shared responsibility for making sure that working families didn't get ripped off, but they all failed. In many cases, they seemed to regard their primary mission as protecting the big players in the financial system. And they were hamstrung by the Bush administration, which used the appropriations process to starve agencies like the SEC of the resources and personnel they needed to be effective. So while these agencies all had some responsibility for protecting consumers, none of them pursued it vigorously. The performance of regulators at the time put truth to the saying that when everyone is responsible, no one is responsible. Good afternoon, friends. A big day is coming up for millions of households across the country. There are now currently at least six states that will be depositing and mailing out bonus relief checks this October. Lawmakers in these states are aiming to provide a financial boost to their residents to help them manage the current high cost of living. My dear friends, please make sure that you watch until the end of this video to find out if you are eligible. Also, to say thank you for being part of this community. Every Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter these weekly giveaway friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. According to Newsweek, many Americans can expect a payment from our government this month. While the United States is yet to send out federal stimulus checks this year, many residents have direct payments from the government heading their way. Some arrive courtesy of a specific state's tax rebates, while others are one-time payments for specific residents. The federal stimulus checks were designed to support Americans during the financially stressed period of the crisis, when many lost jobs and found their financial realities shifted. But since then, more states have offered rebates or direct payments to help their residents combat the impacts of inflation and navigate further economic uncertainty. First is the state of Alabama. After changing the rebate amounts twice, 
Alabama lawmakers eventually settled on one-time payments of up to $300. When signing legislation that includes the state's tax rebate checks, Alabama Governor Kay Ivey said that she was proud to put her signature on a bill that would return back to them through state tax rebates. Also, in Colorado, the state is offering a property tax, rent, heat credit rebate that is worth up to $1,044. Those who qualify must show proof that they do not exceed the income thresholds. Applications must have been processed before September 10, 2023, in order to start receiving your payment on October 5th through October 30th. Meanwhile, in California, the middle class tax refund will continue to head residence way during the month of October. Many of those who filed a 2020 California tax return by October 15, 2021 will be eligible to receive one. But there are certain stipulations. Many did not receive their payments between October 2022 and January of this year, so they could still be waiting for them this month. So in the South, Georgia's House Bill 162 provides taxpayers a rebate of up to $500. This applies to all those who filed their tax returns in 2021 and 2022. The department started issuing refunds the following month and will continue to do so. For those who filed taxes before the April 18, 2023 deadline, Montana will be paying property tax rebates of $675 this month. In order to qualify, residents had to own or live in a Montana property as their principal residence for at least seven months of the year. They also had to pay property taxes on the residents for the specified year. Alaskan residents will also be very happy to see their permanent fund dividend for both 2023 and 2022. According to Yahoo News, earlier this year, a growing number of forecasters were feeling increasingly certain that the United States was going to avoid a recession. This was as data piled up, showing that the U.S. economy was doing well, navigating rocky terrain. But the consensus has grown murkier on whether the economy will achieve a happy ending, soft landing scenario. Chicago Fed economists said in September that they do not expect a downturn, while many others have warned of looming risks. Karen Kimbrough, LinkedIn's chief economist, is among those that are not so sure that the United States can avoid a downturn, despite some recent data supporting a no-recession outlook. There is not enough data to have convinced many forecasters to keep a soft landing scenario on the table. The labor market has remained robust, steady economic growth is still there, and consumers have yet to buckle. And yet, the Fed hiked interest rates over 500 basis points in 18 months. So dear friends, do you think our economy is headed towards a recession? Please let me know in the comments section below. Well, my awesome and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for today. Thank you very much, friends, for being part of this community. To say thank you every Friday, and this Friday, I will be announcing several winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you would like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos, and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. Thank you, and have a wonderful and very blessed week.